Hi, I'm Alana and welcome back to Yogi Yin. Thanks for joining me. Downward Dog is such a great pose and so many people love it because it's great for strengthening your arms, the back of your head. It's also really, really good for lengthening the backs of your legs and just balancing your entire endocrine system, which is your hormonal system. But a lot of us find Downward Dog quite uncomfortable. So I'm going to take you through um, some different versions of Downward Dog today so that you can make sure that you've got perfect placement for your hands and your feet. I'm going to show you a nice little hip stretcher that you can do while in Downward Dog and I hope you enjoy it. Love your feedback. Namaste. So first of all I want you to just come down to sitting on your mat and just line the top of your mat up against a wall. Now a lot of us have trouble in Downward Dog because it doesn't feel comfortable and sometimes that has to do with the arm position. So what I'm going to do is show you the precise hand position to just place your hands in so you don't feel uncomfortable when you're in Downward Dog. So what I want you to do is just come onto your knees and then we're just going to place the hands like so. So open up the thumbs and open up the forefingers and turn your fingers to the side. And you're going to place your thumb and your forefinger against the wall. So you've got a nice wide space between the thumb and the forefinger. And then from here, we're going to come up into downward dog. So just tuck your toes under. Walk your feet in towards the body. Don't worry if you can't drop your heels to the floor. That'll come. But just feel the arm position that you have there. Look at your arms. Your inner elbow should be turned toward one another. And placing your hands like this will help you to get there. And it will also relax between the shoulder blades. So I want you to hold this position for five deep breaths. And then come up onto your toes, release your knees down to your mat, and then come back up. So you might find that that feels a little awkward because most people are used to putting their needle fingers towards the front of their mat. But if you actually turn your hands out, it's going to relax between your shoulder blades. And I've helped a lot of people with this position doing it this way. The other way we're going to use the wall is we're going to just stretch out our legs with it. So I want you to again, place your hands as we have, spread your fingers nice and wide, and then just raise up, just with your heels against the wall, and we're just going to focus on being able to lower those heels to the floor. So move your hands out if you need a little bit more extra room, and then just gently Sink your heels down towards the mat and you'll find that the wall is just going to anchor them there just to enable you to have that good stretch in the backs of your legs and just hold it here. Make sure you drop your head and you're not looking forward but your ears should be alongside your arms. One more deep breath here. Beautiful. And then just release down. And if you find that this pose is very strong, I want you to come into the lasana, pose of a child, and just release it. Because you never want to push yourself too far. You always be wanting to be bring the body back to a state of equilibrium. Now I'm going to show you a really nice stretch that you can come into with Downward Dog against the wall. Walls can be very handy with yoga. And I want you to just raise your right leg and then just gently take it up the wall behind you. Now you may need to bend your knee here or you may be able to just walk your hands in coming into a deeper stretch against the wall. This is a really nice little hip opener.
and you needn't take it too far. But if you want to, you can come right up against the wall if you wish and just stay there for a few deep breaths. We're going to practice that now to the other side. So start out by coming into it nice and gently. Just taking your leg up against the wall. You're going to find that one side is much easier than the other. Take a couple of deep breaths. And then if you wish to, you can come in a little closer. Or even closer still. And then you can just release it, come back down on your mat, and then again, come into Balasana, pose of a child, just release and maybe stretch out your arms. Beautiful. Once you've had a little rest there, I'm going to show you how to come into Downward Dog without the wall. So again, having your hands placed just so, so that bit in between your forefinger and your thumb is facing towards the top of your mat and spreading your fingers nice and wide. Making sure your inner elbows are turned toward one another. Tucking your toes under, lifting up, first of all. Staying up on the toes, making sure the feet are hip distance apart, and then dropping your knees so your shins are parallel with your mat, and then push your hips up and backwards, and then lower your heels towards the mat. Now, if you're not very flexible in the backs of your legs, please feel free to walk through your feet. And then when you're ready, sink down as low as you can. Your weight should be evenly dispersed between your hands and your feet. And you may feel like you can stay in this pose for a long time and you can hold it for up to six deep breaths if you wish to. Downward dog becomes very comfortable after a while, which is why we use it as a resting pose. But I hope that helps you with your downward dog. If it was feeling uncomfortable, I hope that that makes it feel a little bit more comfortable for you to get into the pose. Let me know how you go. I love your feedback. Thanks for subscribing. Namaste.